Hello everyone, welcome to this video on creating a Line Rider replica. This is a live stream recording, so if something messes up, uh, well, there's not much I can do about it. So this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making this uh, game here where if we hit play, we can draw out a level using our mouse and we can draw as many lines as we want. And then we can hit enter or uh, space and the player will play through it. And you can see that I've even added some forces to these lines, but that's totally optional. You can pretty much do anything um, you want with it. And it's just something that's really, really fun to play around with. We can even make lines while the game is, so to say, um, playing. Uh, so yeah, really, really fun thing. And uh, let's just jump right into it. So let's start by creating a new project. Let's go to File, New Project. And let's call this something like Line Rin, uh, Rider replica there we go and let's check off 2d and i'm just going to put it in my project folder go ahead and hit create project and unity is going to create all the necessary meta files in the background here while we wait and i'm just going to see if everything's working uh looks like it could you get stuck could could i get it stuck in a circle yeah i definitely could there's many ways to mess this up that's how it is when you create a sandbox game and uh, let's start by taking our main camera here and just changing the background color to a complete white, as in the original. And I'm also going to uh, change the size of our orthographic camera here to 8, just to zoom things out a little bit. Um, and yeah, let's actually begin by just bringing our player into the scene. So let's... Uh, I have this player graphic here. It's a PSD file. Again, this will be on GitHub when I upload the entire project after we're done. Um, or at least before, or at least sometime tomorrow. Depends on when we, uh, when we get done here. Um, but you can pretty much use anything you like. You can even use uh, the default sprites that come with Unity. So let's just drag this into the project panel. And I'm just going to go ahead and change the pixels per unit here to something like 800 and change the max size to something like uh 128 i think is going to be pretty good just so when we drag it in here it's not going to fit the entire screen let's also maybe take this guy and drag it up a bit just to place him in the kind of upper left cor corner so that we have some space to work with and that's also a thing that you should really go ahead and create if you are serious about making this game is uh, some way to move around the camera so you can create levels that are bigger than what you can fit on a single screen. And then when you play, have the camera somehow follow the player. But we can talk about ways of doing that um, uh, later. Now let's get the basic things in place. And that is, of course, a rigid body. So let's add a rigid body 2D. And um, I don't think we really need to change anything here. You might want to bump up the gravity scale. And that kind of makes the game feel like it plays a lot faster because our pl player falls faster and so um, he um, the forces or he writes down slopes faster um, but I'm just going to leave it at one and I'm going to change the body type to static so that when we play uh, he's not going to fall anywhere he's just going to sit there for now I'm also going to focus on him by hitting F in the scene view and add another component and this one is going to be our capsule collider 2D this is also a fairly new uh, nice addition to the 2D system the capsule collider and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, change this to horizontal. And um, I think the X, X value is, is fine somewhere around here, somewhere around one. And I'm just going to bump down the Y a bit. And I'm also going to kind of shift it down just to place it where his, um, let's see here. Just to place it kind of at the bottom here, um, we don't want it to be affecting the stick man, uh, just the um, vehicle. Cool. So now that we have him there and he has physics and everything, we can go ahead and create something for him to ride on. And um, yeah, people are asking what this is. It is a guy on a sled. I'm really sorry that it looks so bad. Um, I tried to create something that was kind of like the original, but still I didn't want to be copyright slapped. So yeah, this was all I could come up with. <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> all right, so um, let's go ahead and do some scripting. So the first thing that we need is some way for us to create a line and change the points in that line. 
And to do that, let's go ahead and create an empty game object. Let's reset the transform and call this one line. Let's also add a component called the line renderer. And we'll also add a um, edge collider. So this is responsible for graphics. This is responsible for physics collisions. Then we can take our line renderer here and we can open the positions array. And this defaults to two positions, one at 0, 0, 0 and one at 0, 0, 1. And because one is in the depth, we can't actually see the line. So let's change that to 0 and instead have it go like 1 by the x. And now we can see a ridiculously large uh, line that is also purple. So let's go ahead and bump down the width here to change the uh, size of it. And I'm just going to set it to something like 0 0.08. And let's also uh, add some other color. And we could do that by first adding ma a material. Some people just go down here and try and change the color. That's not going to work because we need a material to actually use that color to display um, to display the object on screen. So let's go down here and right click, go create, and then material. And we can call this something like line mat. No need to complicate it further than that. Let's also select the line and drag the line mat into the material slot. Now, of course, our line mat is currently a standard shader. I think it's a lot better if we change this to something like a sprite default. And this will allow us to change the color through the color mode here. So, or through the gradient editor. And that's all, that also means that we can have the first part of it be black and then have it fade out. But I'm just going to make the entire line black. One thing that could be pretty cool to experiment with is having kind of the edges of it fade out. And we could do that by having a very, very narrow fade out here at the end. I'm just going to fade it to white here. So have this be black and then this be um, black as well. And this then the, sink, uh, the final part here be white. But you can see the problem with this occurring. And that is we can't have a fade out uh, between um, the two points. So yeah, it doesn't look too good. I experimented with that, but I uh, wasn't too happy with it. So I'm just going to cut it off. And we can also give it some corner vertices, something like... Um, and actually, we might need to uh, have it be something like five here just to kind of smooth it in the ends. Actually, we might need to do more. Three, five. I think five could be pretty good. But um, because it's so small and our line is has a very, very low width, uh, I don't think we're going to be yeah using this too much. I'm just going to set both of them to five now, and then we can always experiment with it later. Uh, this will just smooth off the ends and round off the corners. That's all we're doing. Instead, inserting some extra, uh, extra vertices. And this is going to cost you a little bit on performance. So now that we have our line set up, we need to control it through a script. And we do that by adding a new component. And we'll call it something like, well, we can just call it line. Let's double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. And I'm just going to wait for Visual Studio to load up here take a sip of, sip of water and it's loading up on my secondary monitor so let me just drag it over cool so the first things that we're going to be needing um, is references to of course the line renderer and the edge collider so let's go ahead and create two public variables and so we can just drag them in in the ins inspector so we'll have a public line renderer and we'll call this something like line renderer and we'll have a public edge collider and of course it's an edge collider 2d and we'll call that one edge call or edge collider if you will i'm just going to call it edge call and um yeah so now we can already go inside of unity if we save that and reference the two just to make sure that we don't forget there we go and uh, next up we need um some kind of way to store the points so i would like to create either an array or much easier, a list of all of the points that we're going to be using for a line. And uh, in order to use a list, make sure to be using system.collections.generic. This way we can go ahead and write list here. And we want the list of vector twos, a list of two dimensional points. And we'll call this one points. Remember the difference between a list and an array is that an array is great for storing um, X amount of items but only if you don't need to change the size of it. If you need to change the size of an array, you actually need to create a whole new array and set it equal to that. So 
it's not resizable, but it is more performant. However, if you do need uh, to uh, resize your list, use a generic list. This allows you to add things at the end, remove things, add index points. It's super awesome, uh, but it is less performant. So it's always a decision you have to do. Do I need to resize or do I not? And we do, so we're using a list. Then we need some kind of um, public void. And the reason why I'm making this public is because I want it to be accessed from the script that is going to be creating these lines. And we are going to call it something like update line. And this is a method we'll call in the update loop whenever we are actually still working on the line. As soon as it's finished, we're not going to be uh, using this script at all. And so this function is not going to be called, but each frame that we are currently drawing on the line, we're going to be calling this update line method. And that means that it allows us to do different points. It allows us to, uh, or different things. It allows us to insert new points and also to set up the line if it hasn't already been set up. For example, we need to check if points is equal to null, because if it is, we need to go ahead and make sure that points equals a new list of vector twos. So this way we instantiate our list and now we can go ahead and add elements to it. So we'll create some kind of set point or add point uh, method and we'll add that in a second. And then we can just return out of the function. Then down here under this, uh, in case we uh, have already set up our points array and, and this is not our first point, we can go ahead and check, check if the mouse has moved enough for us to insert new point. And if it has insert point at mouse position. And we'll go ahead and do that in just a sec. First off, let's create our set point method. So let's go void set point. And of course, whenever we are setting a point, we need to insert the position of the point, and we'll do that as a vector two. So this is going to take in a vector two called point, and we'll make sure to also feed this into the update line, um, because we could of course just get our mouse position here. <sighs> do we want to do that? I don't actually think we do. Kind of debating on that. No, I think we want to feed it into the function. It's it's cleaner this way. So we'll pass a vector two point on into this function as well, and we'll pass that on to the set point method. So that means that when we're creating the line and updating it, we're giving it our mouse position, calling it point, and we're feeding it into the set point method so that down here we can again use our mouse position referred to as point. And um, in here we can then go and access our points array. So we can go points dot add, add a new point. And we're just going to be adding the point vector two that we feed into the function, which is going to be a mouse position all the time. And uh, then down here, we can say line renderer dot, and we need to say something like um, points num positions, that's the name equals points dot count. So we're going to, um, or we currently keep track of the points locally. We have an array or a list up here of points and we add points onto that list, but we need to also apply that to the line renderer. And the way that we do that is first of all, set the number of positions on our line renderer, the number of points equal to the length of our points list. Then we also need to go and add the new point to that list. So we go line renderer dot set position. And the position that we want to set here is at the index, which is at the bottom of the list. So the point that we just added, we want that index and we want to insert that point. So in our case, that's going to be points dot count minus one. Because remember, if we have indexes that go zero, one, two, three, let's imagine uh, that we have a length, um, a, a list length of three. So we have one or zero, one, two. And so the last index is going to be two, which is three minus one. Yeah, so that's why we take the length here or the count and um, subtract one. And so we get the last index in the uh, list. And we are also going to, of course, feed in now the point. Cool. And this is a lot easier for the edge collider, actually. For the edge collider, we simply go edge call dot points 
and set it equal to points. However, there's one slight problem with this and that is edge collider.points is actually an array. And it's kind of weird for me that it's an array when it needs to be resized at runtime. I don't know why Unity chose to do, do that. I'm sure they had a good reason. Uh, but we do uh, therefore need to convert our points list here into an array before we could feed it in. And the way we do that is by using points dot to array. Boom, and we're done. It's that easy. It's just a single function call. Uh, really, really easy to do. So now we should be setting points and um, we should be able to update our line, but we still don't check or we currently only insert a single point and that is at the very beginning when we set up our line. We still need to check if the mouse has moved enough for us to insert new points and if it has, do it. And that's what we're going to be doing now. So in order to do that, we need some way of checking the distance between the previously inserted point and the current point uh, or the current mouse position. And the way we do that is by using an if statement and we're going to check if and we're going to get the last point in the array or in the list and we do that by using points dot and this is very nice. Currently we don't have access to a function called last which simply just gets us the last point in the um in the list so what we need to do is actually go in here and access using points dot count minus one and we can totally do that that's legitimate and it should get us what we need uh the problem with this or, or i mean it's just not very clean instead we could go up here and say using system dot link and this simply allows us to co convert this piece of messy code into points dot last there we go. And it gets us the same thing. So that's a really nice thing to, to, to use if, if you need to do this sort of calculation a lot. And of course we need to check the distance between, so we will say something like vector2.distance between points.last and the current point. And if that is, um, let me see if I got the syntax right, looks like it. If that is greater than, and then some value. I'm just gonna space my points out with about 0.1. You can turn this into a float up here if you want it to be configurable in the uh, inspector. I'm just gonna hard code it in here. And if it is, meaning if the distance between our last point and our current point is greater than one, we'll go ahead and insert it. So we'll see, uh, say set point and feed in the point. If not, nothing is going to happen. The point here that we're trying to update with is just going to be ignored. So really, really cool. Uh, we could also maybe rename this one to mouse position. I think that's a little clearer because um, currently it's not a point, it's only a point when we insert it down here. So here it's just our mouse position. It's, it's better this way, it's cleaner. And by the way, the way that I did a quick renaming of all of the variables at the same time is by using control R R. So hold down control and press R twice. And this allows us to refracture the variable and you can see just how nice that is. Just hit enter when you're done. Cool, so um, I believe that's all we needed to add to the script. One final thing, um, and this is something that's also a bit weird with the uh, edge collider. And that is we can't actually have an edge collider with only one point. It needs to have at least two points. Um, it makes sense because you cannot create a line from a single point, uh, but it will go ahead and throw an error. So what we'll do instead, uh, that, uh, instead of just inserting it down here, is we'll check if points.count is greater than one. And if it is, we'll go ahead and do this. So we need to make sure that we have at least two points before we try and uh, create some kind of collision. So let's save that and head into Unity. And of course the annoying part of this is that we can't actually see this in action because we need a script to control it. So let's take a line and create a prefab out of it. And let's delete it from our scene. Let's then uh, also maybe save our scene, create, call it something like main level I think is going to be good. Let's also create another empty, again, reset the transform, and this is going to be our line creator and uh, or our draw manager or whatever you want to do. I'm going to call it the line creator, and I'm also going to create a script called line creator. And this is what go is going to take actual input from the player, 
and then create these lines procedurally as we go. So this is going to be controlling and spawning in lines as we go. All right, so let me just have a look in the chat here if everything is looking good. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Everything looks good. That's awesome. Um, yeah, cool. Um, let's do it. Okay, so the line, uh, the line creator here. What do we need? First off, we need some way of getting input from the player. And of course, whenever we want to check for input, we do it in the update method. So we check every single frame. We want to check if we press the mouse button. And we do that by using input dot get mouse button down. And the mouse button that we want is zero, meaning the left mouse button. It's the first one, so we index it with zero. One is the middle and two is the right. So I'm just gonna be using zero here. If we actually get this mouse button down, we want to instantiate a new line. So let's go up here and let's create a reference of type game object to our line prefab. And let's call this one line prefab. Then down here, if we actually press the button, we'll go and instantiate our line prefab. And the position really doesn't matter. So we can just go ahead and ignore that. I will, however, store this in a variable of type game object. And we can call this something like line geo for game object. Then we can use this game object to get the line script sitting on the object. So we'll go up here and create a uh, line and we'll call this something like active line. Then down here, we can set active line equal to line go dot get component of type line. And that's all we need to do. So if we now head into Unity, we should be able to now uh, access our line prefab and we'll just drag that in there. And not much is going to happen because we are only actually creating the line and setting our active line equal to it, um, but we're not setting any points yet. So if we hit play and we start drawing here, we can see that we spawn in a line and we keep doing that every time we click, but you can see they aren't really following the position of our mouse. So to uh, change that, and let me just see here, yep. To change that, what we do is we go in and call the functions that we just created. More specifically, we go in and say active line dot and then update line. And what we wanna feed it is our mouse position. So let's go ahead and get a vector two with our mouse position. And this is equal to um, input dot mouse position. But remember, mouse position is in uh, screen coordinates or in pixel coordinates. And we need to convert that to world coordinates. We do that by saying camera dot main dot screen to world point and then inserting input dot mouse position. There we go. And then we can take our mouse position and feed it into the update line method. So that should actually make sure that when we draw a line here, whoops. And of course we need a reference somewhere. What's going on? Oh, of course we're doing this before we actually have an active line. And so we're getting null reference exceptions. So what we need to do is only do this if active line is not equal to null. Then we can go ahead and access it and change or uh, call the update line uh, method. And also we can just put this in here as well. We'll have another if statement saying if input dot get mouse button up of again, zero, index zero, the first mouse button, which is left mouse click. Um, we'll go in here and set active line equal to null. So we'll just go ahead and make sure that this is no longer going to be called when we release the mouse button. And that should actually be most of it. I think now when we clear, hit play and try and draw, voila, it's working. Oh my God, this is awesome. And we can of course try this out if we go and, and select our player and change his body type to dynamic. He's going to fall down and you can see him interacting with the physics here. We can actually even draw on top of him and create some weird behavior here. 
probably shouldn't do that. But you can see that we can now draw anything that we would like. And you can definitely very easily turn this into some kind of artistic application. You can see I'm kind of doing that already. It's a smiley. It's a really creepy one. Okay, that's bad. Yep. Uh, not the best of artists, um, but it's actually working. And all of these lines, um, as we can see, if we go and hit play here, all of these lines have both line renderers with all these points, but edge colliders as well, as you can see, uh, represented with the green line here. So that's really, really nice. So the next thing is, of course, having some kind of release um, uh, mechanism for our player so that he will actually be able to interact without us having to go through the editor and change the body type. So all we need to do is access the rigid body and change the body type to dynamic uh, through script. And we'll do that by adding a new script. And we'll call this one, let's just call it player. We'll double click it to open it up in uh, Visual Studio. And in here, we can uh, first of all create a reference to our rigid body. So we need a public rigid body 2D and we'll call it RB. Then in the update method, we'll check for input and we'll check if input dot get button down. And the button that we want to check for uh, is currently called jump. It's the space button and it's called jump by default. I'm just going to call this one something like start and then we can go in, change the default uh, value or the default name. And um, if we get the button down start, we want to go ahead and say RB dot body type equals rigid body type 2D dot and then dynamic. Cool. So that should actually be all. Of course, we still need to go into the input manager and actually change it or it's not going to register. And we also need to reference our rigid body 2D there. So let's go and say edit project settings input. Under our axes, we'll now find, find the jump. And uh, actually, it's this one because this one is for the controller and we don't really care about that right now. And we'll change the name here to play. Oops, if I can spell that. Cool. So now we should be able to hit play. Draw a... Oh, oh start. Did I call it start? I meant to write play here. Whatever. Start or play, same thing. Um, save that. And hopefully now gives us no errors. Oh, it's so neat that it actually complains when we run the game and not only when it's used. That's, that's amazing. Uh, I would have been stuck on that for way too long. So we can draw a line, hit space, and boom, our character is standing on the line. Okay, I think it's boring too. <laughs> to get him moving a bit more, um, what we need to do is change the physics map. So currently, by default, uh, on any kind of uh, physics object in Unity, whoa, the light just flashed, um, the um, friction is going to be turned up fairly high. And we don't want this for this game, of course, because on snow and ice, the friction is, of course, low, which is what enables you to ride fast with your sled. That's why we go sled riding in the winter and not on grass. So let's go in here in the project panel. Let's right click and hit create and then select the physics material 2D, make sure it's 2D, and we'll make this the line fizz mat. And we'll set the friction to zero. You can add a bit of bounciness and you can definitely uh, play around with this so you can create separate lines with separate physics materials, some with more friction, some with bounciness. That's, I mean, endless possibilities. You can create trampolines and have him fly around. We'll We'll have a look at that in a second. But for now, we'll just go under our line here and we'll take the line fist mat and drag that under the physics material on the edge collider. Now, when we hit play, we should already see that our player actually slides. And that's a lot more exciting. Cool. And, and let me just show you what that looks like if we change the bounciness on this. We can change it to something like seven. Um, let's just see what that looks like. Way! I mean, this is not really playable, but it's, it's a lot of fun. So you can see how you can play around with this. For some reason that wasn't registering, but that's just probably because I uh, drew on top of it. So I'll just set the bounciness back to zero. 
And the final thing that I did in the demo, I mean, we're pretty much done with what I, I originally set out to do, um, was add kind of a um, force surface, platform surface effector to the thing component. And the cool thing about this component is that it will kind of drive your player forward. Because right now, if you go ahead and make a, um, a um, flat line here, our player is just going to fall down and not much is going to happen. He is going to move a little bit probably, uh, but then come to a stall. And that's not really exciting. Of course, you want some lines to be like that, but the original game also have these red lines, um, which boost the player on. And that's what we can do really easily. So let's select our line here and let's, let's actually create multiple versions of the line. We'll have this one be line underscore uh, normal. We'll have this one be line underscore bouncy. Um, and I'm just going to go in here and duplicate the line fist mat and make this the line fist mat underscore bouncy. Not bounce, bouncy. And bump up the bounciness to something like 0.7 and have this one be the standard or normal. And this way we can go into a line bouncy here and select the bouncy one. Uh, we can also go and duplicate this one more time. I'm just going to duplicate the normal and have this one be our boost. Cool. And on our boost here, we'll go ahead and add a new component. And we can go under physics 2D and you can see all of the fun stuff that you can do with this. You can add area effectors and all this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and add the surface effector 2D. Uh, I'm just going to set this to everything and also make sure that on the edge collider you click used by effector. This will kind of link these two components together. Then on the force, um, we can add something like maybe eight on the speed and we'll leave the speed variation and force scale as is. There are also some other options down here to play around with. So if we now go under our line creator and change our line prefab to boost, we should be able to use this line. So I'll draw it here and you can see just how much quicker this guy will ride along. We can even ride directly up steep hills. So just kind of makes it more fun if you're able to do that and it actually, whoa. Okay, so that's an error that you might run into. In order to fix that, let's select our player and let's make sure to go under dynamic and check off uh, continuous instead of discrete. That's going to help you a little bit. It means that when um, that we shouldn't get those kind of passing through collider problems. You can see it's a lot more accurate now. Good thing that we noticed that I completely forgotten to do that. So we now actually have all of the elements that was in the original game, um, even a bouncy one. We can also go ahead and add a separate line here called pass through, pass through. And um, all we could do for this one is simply disable the edge collider. And this just means that whenever we are, let's take our line creator. Whenever we draw with this one, uh, it's going to have no effect whatsoever. So you can see we can draw a bunch of lines here. We can then switch out with the uh, normal one here. Uh, we can then switch out with the um, bouncy one for, for this one. And then we can switch out with the boost for the last one. And you should now see that when we play it, we pass through those, this one is normal, this one bounces, and this one kind of uh, boosts us upwards. So we already have a lot of stuff to play around with. And all you need to do is insert a bit of code here to switch between them, preferably some UI to do it as well. So you don't have to remember a lot of shortcuts. Uh, it's really, really easy to do. If you don't know how to hook up a uh, UI with um, standard gameplay functions, you can always check out my crash course on the Unity 4.3 GUI. I believe that's what it was called. Uh, I have a crash course on, on the Unity GUI and how you can link up buttons with functions. So uh, that's probably the next natural step here. You could also go ahead and program something for the camera that will allow you to follow the position of uh, your player as soon as you um, unleash him. And also have a script that allows you to move around the camera when dragging or something like that. Maybe using the arrow keys uh, would make it a lot better so that we uh, can create much larger levels. And if you want to go completely nuts, uh, you could even uh, create um, 
uh, flags for checkpoints or end uh, end screens or whatever. A way to restart the level would be really nice, and maybe even a way to save and load levels. But that's a completely other thing. That would be something like storing um, all of the different lines and all of their points, and then inserting them again at a later point. It's a bit more complicated, but it's a challenge that that I think a lot of you is uh, are good enough to, uh, to to kind of take on. So. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the uh, tutorial part of this live stream. I think we'll transition over to the Q&A part, as, at least if uh, if everyone is cool with it. Um, um, yeah, I'm just looking in the chat here to see if everything's good. It is. Cool. So yeah, I think we'll wrap up the tutorial. Pretty uh, pretty quick one today, but I think that's all right. And uh, we'll just get going with the Q&A. Just leaves us more time to do that. So let me switch over to my other layout here. There we go. Hello, guys. I'm on the big screen and you guys are in here as well. So ask away with anything that you would like. Um, I am here to answer your questions. Um, this game would be cool with multiplayer. Yeah, that, that could be really fun, actually. Okay, kind of an... Um, kind of a co-op experience where you have to complete different things with one guy drawing and the other guy moving around. That could actually be really, really fun. I think you could hook that up pretty easily using the Unity networking system. So if one of you guys make that, definitely post it on the forums and I would I would love to see it. That could be really fun. Um, let's see here. Can you add one video to... Uh, how to make a quiz game which will teach us how to save unanswered questions slash list for later use um i'm probably not going to be adding another video on the course because it's it's pretty much wrapped up in my opinion um but it should be pretty easy to do you should look into player prefs and if you want some more sophisticated saving and loading you should look into uh some kind of uh data saving system like xml JSON, something like that. But just begin with player prefs. It's it's the easiest and fastest to get running. Um, let's see, any marketing tips, especially about getting YouTubers and streamers to feature your game? Yeah, see, that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, when I originally created a game before, um, before YouTube or anything like that, uh, my strategy was to do YouTube. I mean, this this channel was created uh, with the sole purpose of um, of kind of being a way of me to create an audience to direct towards one of my games, and it, it ended up being a standalone thing. Um, but it's it's definitely a kind of hard hard thing to do because marketing quickly requires the budget. I think. The first thing that you can probably do is design your game with uh, YouTubers and um, streamers in mind. Make it attractive for them to play it. Make it something that's fairly easy to pick up and maybe something that has a fun twist to it. Um, I mean, Daniel SD is a good example of a guy who's really, really good at that and who's also um, done a lot of collaborative work with different YouTubers. Uh, who who um who could then feature him when he released his games? Um, I believe he he made what the box. I believe that was the name of the game. What the box? Am I correct here? Um, yeah, and that's been a huge success for him, as far as I can tell. And it's been played a lot on YouTube. So if you want to kind of see how to do it right, check out what the box. Um, why do you disable image upload on your forum? Um, because I'm afraid for my servers. Um, that's actually the simple answer. Um, and I had some issues with it um, when testing out. And I can see a friend is in the stream uh, who's answering a, or asking a lot of stupid questions. So I'll kill you. Uh, and uh, also, you will be banned, sir. <laughs> um, when are you putting out the next video for the runner game tutorial? I'm not sure what tutorial you're talking about. The runner game. Uh, is it the platformer one? Have I created an, an, an endless runner game? I don't, I'm not sure. I have to specify, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, see, even people in the chat here know what the box. So it's really, really well done. Um, 
what game would I like to uh, recreate next? Uh, I have no idea. I actually had a hard time coming up with this one today, but when I did, I just had so much fun, so I had to do it. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have some good ideas of what you want to see in a live stream. Of course, make it something that could realistically be done within like an hour's time frame. But yeah, I'm I'm very open to suggestions. Um, do I have any tips for new Unity users when it comes to practicing Unity features and scripting in C Sharp? Um, yeah, I I might have a few tips. Um, first one is use tutorials and don't be afraid to copy code. Um, that's that's probably the first thing. If you can just get something working, then that's amazing. No matter how much of it you've copied, no matter how little originality is in your original idea, doesn't matter. Just try and get something working. I promise you it's going to be harder than you think and then you're going to learn so much trying to do it. And that that's the most important thing. Um, try and set realistic goals. Don't start with, I'm going to make the next Call of Duty. Start with something smaller, like I'm going to make something where when I click the screen, the box will turn red. And you learn a lot of stuff by doing that. You know, learn about materials, renderers, uh, properties. You learn about input. Um, there's a lot of stuff in that and variables and references and functions and all that stuff. So start small and um, yeah, definitely just use as many resources as uh, possible. If it's available to you, why not use it? Um, so yeah, you can always learn the hard way at a later point. Um, and also copying people's code is amazing. You, you have to read it and kind of adjust it to your own game and maybe even experiment with it in order to get it to do something a bit different. And that's a perfect learning process when you don't feel totally familiar with the syntax or don't know the API. And so you have to sit with the scripting reference for a long time. It's what I did. Um, a Tempest remake, that could be fun. Um, what's my favorite uh, Unity feature? That's a really good question. I, I don't think with Unity it comes down to one feature because I don't think that Unity necessarily is leading in any kind of particular uh, subject. I mean, graphics wise, there are engines that are prettier and um, more advanced than Unity. Um, programming wise, in order what uh, in, in terms of what you can do with performance, that are there are custom engines that are, are quicker. There are engines that can do more impressive physics stuff and stuff like that. Um, and Unity only recently did stuff like uh, really move into version control and collaboration. And um, Unity Cloud Services is 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 pretty impressive. I must give them that. But I don't think it's with Unity that it's one particular thing. I think my favorite Unity feature is the first of all how quick i can work in unity and also just the easy of use it's it's just so quick to get something working in unity and that's because of the way that they've designed the editor and some of the choices they've made when it comes to scripting and um and their whole component system it's just it's awesome so yeah that's probably uh, the best the best part um will i ever do a big and scary project like cool 18 does um, I think recently I've enjoyed a lot to do very small isolated projects and if I'm working on a series it's going to be a small one and the reason why is I think big scary projects often get very hard to man maintain and most importantly you lose 95% of your audience after the first 10 videos and that's not something that I necessarily want to do because I, I feel like a lot of the stuff that I explain later on in the videos, it's not because it's too hard for the other 95% to understand. It's just that there's so much stuff in such a series when you create a big game that is not relevant to each and every person, that is only specific to the game. And it's not that it's hard or that it's particularly good to learn. It's just something that you have to go through. And that's not really something I want to focus on. Uh, I've done 
um, courses that are really long that f- teaches you how to create a game from scratch and then to completion pretty much and, and exporting. Mega Game is an, a good example of that. Uh, the 2D platformer course, um, while maybe being ended a bit abruptly, shows a lot of the game design process. Uh, so I would like to focus on more s- smaller standalone subjects and I can see my black screen there. Um, but um, but then again, I'll never say never. I mean, it's also there's also a lot of fun stuff about working on a larger project, especially if I had a, uh, the ability to um, to include you guys more as Cool Eighteen did. So maybe <laughs> uh, favorite Unity components that are underused by other developers. Oh, that's a good question. That are underused by other developers. Ah. Uh, I don't know about that one. I feel like Unity really excels at their 2D physics stuff. It's been so easy. I mean, I just found the um, the surface effector here. A lot of their spring and buoyancy and all that physics stuff. It's just so handy to have at your fingertips. Um, other than that, I don't know. Favorite component? The rigid body. It's just so much fun. Underused component? I don't have a good answer. Sorry. Uh, do you have any videos on Perlin noise wall generation? If not, is that something you'd like to do? I'd love to do something with procedural wall generation, especially using Perlin noise because it's available um, through the Unity Math F library by default. And so be pretty relevant to just pick that up, create a procedural terrain, uh, maybe even a procedural mesh if we don't want to use the default terrain system because that drives me crazy every time I look at it. Um, that could be really fun. Um, there are really good tutorials on that, especially a written tutorial that I saw at one point. Um, but still, yeah, if it can be done in a f- one to two videos, I would love to pick it up, but it is for advanced users and um, might be too. No, I would love to do it. Yeah, when I get time. Um, let's see. How can make a tutorial? Uh, can you ever make a tutorial on how to make a 2D platformer? If I'm going to make a new video, uh, I'll probably not publish a new video on that for a long time. Um, I don't know if I'll ever publish a new video in that particular series. I feel like I covered everything that I wanted to cover in that particular series. However, I do want to do more 2D videos and I do uh, want to create more that could be relevant for the series. I would just wrap it up in a standalone thing. So I don't think I'll necessarily continue uh the course um with another video um let's see um what game genre is the easiest to work on you guys are asking the hardest questions um that's a very general general generic question and i'm having a hard time to say only a single genre i mean uh gameplay wise it's often easiest to get something arcadey up and running pretty quick and that's also been the theme of these videos i mean um something with simple movement something where the core gameplay rests on very very simple uh, mechanics might be something physics based is often the easiest thing to get up and running because physics just so quickly feels fun um if you give a bit of control over some kind of physics object uh it gets it gets it gets fun really quickly but uh some harder stuff is the opposite where where your content creation is so important and you have to create a lot of levels and items and objects and characters and textures and um where you have to do a lot of coding that only applies to a certain part of parts of your game stuff like rpgs especially if multiple and especially if massive um but also stuff like RTS games is very, very programming intensive. So um, I would say uh, easiest is probably something in the arcade genre. But it's a generalization. That's that's just how it is. Um, how do I get good inspiration for new game ideas? That's a good question. I actually do that by playing old games. I feel like um, I'm not the best when it comes to game ideas. Often I'll rip off a game and kind of do a twist and I'll call it my own thing. Um, but I think that's how 
pretty much the entire game development industry works. It's very rare to see a completely unique gameplay element that's never been done before. And frankly, you can never guarantee that your game um, idea is unique. Of course, if you're going to claim that it's a unique idea, you need to do a lot of research, but I never do that. I just make something and if it's fun, it's fun. Um, I mean, the biggest games ever have all been rip-offs of some games that have done the same thing before them, but in a slightly different way or with less cute graphics or smaller marketing budget. Um, example, Angry Birds. It's probably one of the biggest mobile games ever and it's just the same thing as a million other mi mini clip games um, before it. So yeah, it's how it is. But I, I would say playing playing games is a good source of inspiration. Sometimes I just browse mini games looking for something that feels fun to do and uh, maybe gives me some kind of inspiration. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, the... Okay, you were asking for the that's um, for the how to make a video game series. Sorry, of course that's kind of endless runner. I see it. Um, yeah, I mean, new video out probably Sunday, I think. <laughs> I try and upload a video for that series once a week, and then um, normally that's Sunday, and then Wednesday I try. Um, or Wednesday, sorry, someone pointed out that I pronounced it wrong. I say Wednesday now. Um, yeah, I'll upload that either Wednesday or Sunday. And then the other day I would like to do a standalone uh, video each week. So uh, you can be pretty sure to see a sing uh, at least one video a week in that series. Don't worry about it. And so fun series, by the way, I don't think will go on much longer because um, I've pretty much co uh, covered all the essential things that I wanted to have in the series. And again, I don't want to create a very long one, uh, but we'll probably land around 10 videos or something like that. Uh, what would you say is the best software for pixel 2D design? It has to be free. Oh, if it has to be free, I don't know. Uh, GIMP is good for pretty much anything. Um, it's a good piece of software and it's free. I use Photoshop, so that's not free. Um, there are a lot of online tools if you just want to do easy pixel art. Um, just search for pixel art on online. And uh, there are a bunch of web um, in-web services that help you do that. You could use one of those. I even created an edit editor extension for Unity at some point that, um, that allowed you to create pixel art. It's called Pixel Art Toolkit. Uh, it's available on the asset store for free. Um, it's not been maintained for a long time. So I have no idea if it still works. Um, but yeah, the chat is saying Piskel. Um, check out Piskel. What is the weirdest game I, have made, I ever made? Um, I've made some weird games with friends. It's always really fun to put your friends in games. Uh, recently, um, we had a, a, a day here where we just... Um, thought let's make something together and, and most of my friends are not game developers uh, developers actually pretty much none of them are uh, like real life friends um but still they think it's really fun to participate and uh, we try and try and make something uh, together where I basically put them in front of a green screen and had them do rid ridiculous uh, thing in stop time motion put them into the game and they could be the main characters of, of a platformer uh, it was about my friend who lost a guitar and uh, he wanted to find it. And we had him do some voice acting as well. Really silly. Uh, my other friend was the evil villain. Gave him a uh, kind of bat like wings and had him chase around. Yeah, stupid things. That's probably the answer. Probably not, but it's the one that I can remember. Um, yeah, I'm from, I'm from Denmark. Uh, when, what did you study? Um, I did not go to university. I fairly recently, about a year ago, finished up, not a year ago, a little under a year ago, finished up a gymnasium, which is pretty much like high school. And I uh, went to Awahoi, if you know it. It's in the, it's pretty central to the city. Um, and thanks for all the compliments, guys. You guys rock. Um, can I please make a quiz tutorial with the crossword or scramble playing system? Maybe. Could be fun to do. 
I've never played many of those games myself. I don't really enjoy them too much, mostly because I really, really suck at quiz games. I know I've made a quiz game tutorial, but it's ridiculous how bad I am. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I might consider it. Um, do slash will you do a Ludum, uh, Ludum Diary live streams? So I haven't actually done a Ludum Diary live stream and that's for a few reasons. The first one is I'm not a very experienced live streamer and so I get really exhausted when, uh, when live streaming. I can pretty much only live stream for like one and a half hour and I am tired. Um, of course, it's doing a Ludum Diary live stream. It's a different thing. You don't have to interact this much with the camera and such because yeah you would have no time to do coding um but i i just the idea of streaming for such a long time it messes me off <laughs> um yeah but again maybe sometime uh, right now i'm just enjoying uh doing a lot of diary recording some stuff where i where i want to and mixing it up into a standalone video that's normally what i do and you can check those out if you want uh, you can just search for Ludum Diary on my YouTube channel and there are some pretty tightly edited videos uh, showing how I created my games. Um, please stop spamming, guys. Um, please do a Draw My Life. That's a really, really good idea. I don't know why I haven't done those yet. Um, probably because of my drawing skills. Oh no. You, s you guys saw them before. I should do a Draw My Life where I only draw in the Lion Rider replica we just made. <laughs> <laughs> no promises um but yeah a drama life could actually be really really fun i would love to do that um can you make a tutorial on xml serialization perhaps or json something along those lines i would love to do something with saving and loading um i think it's time i bring up my notes here to try and write down some of that, these ideas because um there's no way I'm going to remember all of them if I don't do this. So let me just give me one second. So saving, loading, uh, XML, JSON, and of course, um, maybe just Unity's player prefs. We'll see. And draw my life. Cool. Um, will you ever make a small RPG game tutorial? Maybe. Maybe at some times, if you decide to make a new tutorial series, can you make an RTS? That's a very, very big game to make. So I don't think I'll be making an entire RTS. Might do parts of it, might do unit control, how you can kind of control those guys around and have them stand in different formations. That could be pretty fun. Maybe do something with camera panning. There are a lot of, lot of possibilities. Uh, you can hire an artist for drama life. Oh, that's cheating. No, don't want to do that. Um, can I do a tutorial on adding multiplayer to things? It's a fairly generic subject. It really depends on the game, what you need to do, but maybe. Um, let's see. Uh, I love RPG games. Would be awesome to see a tutorial on it. Yeah. RPG games are really, really fun to work on. They are just so huge. I mean, they require so much code. Oh, maybe parts of it. Again, we can maybe break it up into smaller segments. I'll think of it. Think about it. Um, yes, this is the end. We went through the entire uh, tutorial part and this is the Q&A and I think we'll also wrap this out uh, fairly soon so final questions guys um, I had a lot of fun I mean I always love doing these live streams um, you guys are just awesome to um, to hang around with and uh, yeah so what's my favorite game Jesus with the hard questions can you guys ask something that doesn't require a lot of thought <laughs> Ah, uh, I should prepare questions in advance. My favorite game. Probably the game that I spend the most time playing is World of Warcraft. And I have a certain love for the Blizzard style. The art and the characters, everything's just fun. So if I had to pick a single one, it would probably be that. Then again, Counter-Strike is really good and really fun played that way too much ah do i really have to choose 
Um, will you keep this video in VOD or upload to YouTube for us? Um, it will be available just after we are finished as a VOD on Twitch, but it, they take it down after two weeks. So I make sure to also upload it to YouTube tomorrow afternoon. Don't worry about it. Uh, you will have it as long as you want. Um, what class did I have, it, have in WoW? Um, in World of Warcraft, that is. I played a lot of different classes. Paladin. Uh, they all gone. Hunter. <sighs> Warrior. Warlock. But had pretty much all of them in max level at some point. And again, I played way too much, guys. Way too much. <laughs> Um, I don't play too much anymore. Uh, once once in a while, I pick it up. Played recently with a friend. That's that's always fun. But I I can't stand playing it alone. I have to play with friends. Um, let's see. Train simulation would be great. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, tutorials on specific components and some ideas on what to do with them. Yeah, example line renderer can be used to draw trails, attack. And explain the variables of the components. That could be a pretty fun thing to do, actually. Kind of base an entire series off a component. Yeah, I'll consider that. I'll write it down. Video based on component. Uh, do I know 3D modeling? If yes, please make a tutorial. I know a little bit of 3D modeling. I'm very, I'm a really, really bad artist. So what I can do with it is very limited. But I know many of the tools and I know my way around Blender and Maya and some other 3D modeling softwares that you probably don't know. Um, so I, I know the whole slang. I know the ways that things are done. I'm just really, really bad at using them. So uh, I might be able to do a tutorial uh, at Blender at some point, um, a tutorial on Blender at some point, but it's not going to be right now. Um, I'm going to write that down here as well. Blender tutorial. And that's going to have to be a small series. Um, a 3D racing game. I would love to do that as well. Actually, um, a cool guy called Theo is currently working on a realistic car for dev assets. And uh, when that gets done, I will probably have a look at creating something with that. That could be really fun. Uh, it looks amazing. Currently, the renders are beautiful. He's still working on it, but... It's going to be really good. Also, I haven't mentioned that at all. If you guys like this live stream, the reason why we are able to do it is because of the Patreon supporters. Patreon is a way for you to donate a monthly amount of your choosing and uh, it's cancelable at any time and it's really awesome. It, it what allows me to do this. And uh, if you want to support me and uh, the videos and the live streams, you can go to patreon.com slash Brackies. It also is a good way to socialize. I'm. It's hard for me to get in contact with all of you guys, uh, but I'm. I, I I write a lot with the Patreon supporters. So if you want to get kind of become friends or something, uh, it's a good place to reach me. So Patreon.com/slash/Brackies. And thanks to the people who are already supporting you guys, rock. Um, and also, if you want to uh, get cool free three D models. Um, you can go to devassets.com. It's pay what you want, so you can choose any price whatsoever. You can even download them for free. And uh, there's a desert environment that looks awesome uh, that we just released. I'm actually just going to go ahead and switch my screen over here so you can so you can see it here. Uh, whoops. There we go. It's here. So if you go to devassets.com, you can see here there's the new FPS environment. And it looks just amazing. It's created by a guy called Sam Troth. Awesome guy. And uh, here's the video for it. So you can get an idea of, of how that looks. Um, everything is just rendered in Unity. is uh, ready to use out of the box. It comes with an example scene. Um, like over 30 or 40 models. Uh, all PBR, really high quality. And it's, yeah, it's just awesome. There are also modern weapons. A Western props pack. And a variety of other stuff. So um, you can also check out the 2D Mega Pack, which I created, which seems to be very popular. So it has stuff like platformers, top down shooters, tower defense, gold miner stuff, all kinds of sprites. Check it out. So yeah, devassets.com. Just wanted to give that a mention. Um, and yeah, okay. So I think that is it for now. Can we create 2D asset for devassets? Um, if you want to create some assets, you can write to apply at 
brackies.com apply at brackies.com uh it's the email address uh, i definitely want to bring some more 2d stuff on there since it seems to be pretty popular so currently it's almost only 3d stuff cool thank you so much guys i'm gonna wrap up the stream now i had so much fun you guys rock and uh yeah i'll see you in the next video so thank you so much bye bye everyone thanks to all the awesome people who donated in february and a special thanks to derek heemskirk faisal marify james Calhoun, and jason latito if you want to become a patron yourself you can do so at patreon.com slash thanks a lot guys